guys welcome or welcome back to my channel welcome to another video it has been a minute since i have sat down and filmed a video i actually don't even think i filmed a video fully like sitting down in my new house so that's crazy but yeah i am in a new space obviously i have some newly decorated bookshelves i actually had this bookshelf in my old apartment i just never displayed it it was in my dining room and it was kind of always tucked away so i didn't really have it on display much but yeah i went through and decorated it i still need to buy a few things for it but i love it it has my new background but in today's video i'm going to be going over all of the books that i've read recently specifically in the month of may and june i did not do wrap-ups for either of those months so i wanted to go over all of the books that i read within those two months i actually read a good amount of books throughout the month of may but then june came around i obviously moved and i was in quite a big reading slump honestly I did not read that much in June but May definitely makes up for it so I am excited to sit down and talk about books it's been a minute since I've done that so anyways let's go ahead and get into the video a lot of these are May reads so it has been like two months since I've read them if I kind of don't remember a lot about them please forgive me I have a very very short memory so I did go through and like I try to make notes while I'm reading it so I don't forget everything so I'll try to kind of go off of that so start Starting off strong, I started off the month of May reading Funny Story by Emily Henry. This came out at the end of April, and if you've been watching my channel, you know Emily Henry is one of my all-time favorite authors. I love so many of her books, specifically Happy Place and People Leave Me On Vacation were two of my favorites. So yes, when she was coming out with the new release, I was so, so, so excited. I actually took this on vacation with me. We went to Myrtle Beach for my sister's bachelorette party, and I was reading this on that vacation. Yeah, this was a super quick read. Emily Henry always has super quick reads. I feel like I go through them so fast. Also, such a beautiful cover. Love the color. The side is beautiful as well. All the lemons. Also, it takes place in Michigan, and if you don't know, I live in Michigan, so it was just, it's just so interesting to see an author talk about the state that you live in and all of the fun things about it. This tells the story of Miles and Daphne. Bear with me, I really am struggling to remember this. Daphne was with this guy. He ends up going off and dating, starting to date this girl, his best friend, whose boyfriend is Miles, and obviously they're both newly broken up with and they decide to move in together so miles and daphne both move in together daphne's ex fiance gets married to this best friend of his it's all very very confusing lots of different connections and stuff but anyways they move in together because they are newly broken up with and she needs a place to stay so he's like why don't you come stay with me? Um, it's it's a very, very interesting story. Like I said, I love Emily Henry. I love her writing. I feel like I connect to a lot of her characters and um, just like the deeper things that they're going through. I feel like that's why I always connect to her books. I liked this book. It wasn't one of my favorites of hers. I gave it a four out of five stars. The notes that I had are the middle fell kind of flat for me. It's definitely interesting, but I feel like it wasn't like, oh my gosh, I want to pick up this book and read it so bad. It just kind of fell off a little bit in the middle and then the end kind of picked up a little bit more. It felt very, very mature, like the conversations and everything that was going on between the two characters. I just feel like they were obviously both struggling a lot with what was going on, but they like handled it maturely. It was a good book. I would recommend this to anyone. It just was not one of my favorite Emily Henry books. I didn't connect a ton to both of the main characters. I didn't feel that love connection between them as much as maybe some other people did. I love her writing always and I will always, like she's an auto buy author for me. I just, it was just not one that I connected a ton to. Now that I've been yapping for seven minutes about Emily Henry, let's go to number two. So the second book that I picked up in May was Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. Oh, you guys, I loved this book so, so, so much. So this is the first book in the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy. I have previously read Caraval, which is also a trilogy, and I read that like a year ago. It was pretty good. It wasn't anything super crazy. It's a cozy fantasy. Um, I heard that you have to read that before jumping into this one, so that's why I read that first. And then 
I finally, finally started this book in May, or this series in May, and I wish I would have started it sooner because I loved this so much. I actually first rated this four and a half stars, and then I recently bumped it up to five stars just because I feel like it's a book that I have not been able to stop thinking about. I feel like the plot of this is so confusing to try to explain to anyone, so I'm not even going to try to explain it, but it's just so fun, and there were so many twists and turns that happened and I was not expecting and I feel like that's why I loved it so much and yes we also see Jackson here which is a character in the Caraval series. I have to say I feel like a lot of people say that it doesn't matter which trilogy you read first but I fully stand with the fact that you should read Caraval first because there's so much that happens in that book that gives background to this book and I feel like if you pick up this first it's just going to give away everything that happens in Caraval. So I definitely would recommend to read the Careful series first and then jump into this because I there's so much background that I know that helps me going into this. Like it just all made sense. So I have Ballad of Never After which is the second book in the series on my TBR for this month so I'm really really excited to get into it. I have not been able to stop thinking about this. Like the ending was crazy so I cannot wait to read that. Okay, and then I picked up Lock Every Door by Riley Sager, and this fell so flat for me, you guys. So I had recently read The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager also. I actually picked up this book because I did a video where I read my subscribers' favorite books. I had someone comment that this was one of their favorite books. I also listened to a good part of the audiobook for it as well, so I had a mix of both going. It wasn't bad, I will say. It was definitely intriguing. I feel like just some of the decisions that the main characters made was so frustrating. <laughs> like towards the end of the book we got into a particular part of the story that just felt very very eerie to me and I did not want to continue reading it. So I actually ended up just looking up the ending because I don't know it just gave me a very very eerie feeling and that's something that I don't love to read about. I actually did not end up fully finishing this. I think I had like 50 pages left so it wasn't that much but it's not terrible. I gave it a three and a half stars. It's just not one that I would recommend honestly. Like, I just feel like there's so many other thriller books to read. Actually I gave this three out of five not even three and a half. I also found that there was a lot of similarities in his other book that I read that were in this book and it just seemed like like we've seen this before why are we doing it again kind of thing you know so yeah three out of five stars for this one the next book that i picked up was icebreaker by hannah grace this is a very 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 popular hockey romance and i've had this book on my tbr for a very long time around my shelves at least and i finally wanted to pick it up because i was like i'm either gonna love this or i'm gonna hate it and i just want to find out so i can like knock it off of my tbr so i ended up starting this and i did not finish it i got to page like 130. if you like hockey romances you will probably like this this had so much spice in it and like i wasn't even halfway through the book and i was already like wow <laughs> Like, it's just not why I read a book. It's not why I pick up a book. It's not why I enjoy reading. Yeah, it just wasn't for me personally. And please don't come for me. Not everyone likes Spice. If you like this book, then that is your own opinion. I should not have even bought it knowing how much Spice there was based off of what other people said. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> okay, the next book that I read was Powerless by Lauren Roberts. You guys, <laughs> I have chills just thinking about this book. Oh my gosh. So um, if you don't know, this is the novella after Powerless, which I'm sure everyone knows what Powerless is. It is the first book in, I don't even know what this is called. Is it, is there even a name to this series? Anyways, Powerless is the first book in the series by Lauren Roberts. It was her debut novel. Blew up completely. Everyone was obsessed with it. I personally gave it... I think four and a half stars i i did like it a lot i will say there was a lot of good quotes in it and yeah it was just very similar to the hunger game so and i also listened to a lot of it on audiobook which i feel like has to do with why i wasn't obsessed with it like everyone else but you guys i wasn't even gonna pick this up i genuinely did not even like want to read it and then i was 
at my boyfriend's apartment so I didn't have like any of my books and I had to go like I really wanted to read a new book I didn't have anything so I saw it I was like super quick read and I'm just gonna pick it up and see how I like it and I'm so glad that I did this has Adina's point of view which is Peyton's best friend in the first book oh it was just so good you guys oh my gosh the quotes in this book were insane. Adina was so perfect. The love interest was so perfect. Like, oh my god, everything about it. I This was only 200 pages, and I literally was so obsessed with it. Five stars. Literally five stars. I was in tears while I was finishing this. It was so heartbreaking, but so good, and ugh. I cannot wait for Reckless to come out. It actually, it's already out at this point. It should be arriving to my house at some point this week. I ended up buying it online. I bought the paperback version because I have paperback of the first one and I just want them all to match. Obviously this one is not paperback, but that's okay. I love this book so much. <laughs> Next up, I finally picked up Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens and I just realized I need to give this back to my mom. This is her copy. So I have had this on my shelf for so long or at least on my radar for so long i finally picked it up i chose it for one of my tbr jar videos so i listened to most of this on audiobook i think just because i feel like the beginning was pretty slow to get into it's a very very descriptive book so yeah it was just a very slow intro into the book so i'm actually glad that i listened to it on audiobook because it was so descriptive that i was able to like it felt like i was watching a movie honestly while i was listening to it so i really liked that part to it this is a murder mystery it's a dual timeline as well so we're getting like present day as well as past tense yeah i really did not know what to expect going into this i've obviously heard that so many people like it i would recommend this book i would check trigger warnings for sure before you pick it up because there are a lot of sensitive and hard topics in this book so yeah look that up before you start it but overall i did enjoy it i gave it three and a half stars i'm glad that i finally got into it i don't know I feel like it was shocking but also not shocking at the same time like I just feel very neutral about this book. Next up I picked up A Scythe by Neil Shusterman and this is actually a book that my boyfriend picked out. He picked it out for me for a TBR jar video and I'm actually glad that I picked it up because I feel like if he would have not picked it I would have never picked up this book quite honestly. This is a dystopian book, which is not normally the genre that I reach for. So this tells the story of two people, Citra and Rowan, and they basically live in this world of scythes. So scythes are people that kill other people because there is no other way of population control because basically everything has been conquered like all forms of death have been conquered so there's really like no natural way to die so they have the scythes assigned to essentially kill people to have population control yeah that is the main premise of the story without giving anything super crazy away um i mean it's all literally in the first paragraph of the back here so yeah we're basically following citra and rowan throughout this dystopian world it's very interesting it was definitely different than anything i've ever read in my life i say i'm gonna continue this series but i just don't know if i'm intrigued enough to do so there were just parts where it was very repetitive and very slow i'll honestly be very surprised if i do pick up the second one i don't even have it on my shelves so i don't see myself like reaching for it and like purchasing it so i don't know we'll see if i ever do but yeah it was definitely interesting let me i don't even remember what i rated this i give it oh i give it 3.75 so i must have like somewhat enjoyed it i just i don't know now that i think about it i don't know if i would ever really continue the series so those are all of my may reads which is actually a good amount i read six books in may plus the dnf so kind of six and a half and then we got into June, which was very slow for me. So a lot of that has to do with the fact that I started off the month reading A Court of Wings and Ruin, which is like 800 pages, I think. No, 700 pages. So yes, a very, very large book. This is the third book in the Akatar series. The second book, which is A Court of Mist and Fury, I finished, I think, in like maybe not even April. I feel like it was like March. I loved that book so much. I gave it five stars. 
the ending was crazy and so i don't know why i put off starting this book for so long i think i was just very intimidated by the size of it and i knew that it was going to take me a long time i started this while i was moving which was probably not the best decision just because there was so much going on and obviously it took me like literally the whole month to get through i ended up actually listening to the second half a lot of it on audiobook just because i wasn't finding myself like wanting to pick up the physical book because i was so intimidated and i felt like this book was so slow like honestly i've heard people say that it was so action-packed and so crazy the whole time but personally i did not feel that way i feel like it was like very mundane and just i don't know just like anticipating this thing to happen that was just taking so long so i don't know that's just my personal opinion obviously everyone has their own opinions the ending I don't know i just kind of expected it like i i am excited to read the last two books in the series I, one of my friends um delaney she keeps telling me that a court of silver flames is one of her favorite books ever and that i need to keep going so i can read that one just like it's so long it's like longer than this book overall i think i rated this four out of five stars obviously i still love this series it just wasn't one of my favorites in the series so okay the last book that i read in the month of june i literally only read two books in june but the last book that i read in the month of june was yours truly by abby jimenez and i am so happy to say that i really enjoyed this book if you've been watching my channel i've literally had this on my tbr for so long and i've been putting it off i think i put it as like a book that i'm dreading to read or like picked it out as one of the books i'm dreading to read in my tbr jar videos because I read a part of your world, I feel like I've said this a billion times, but I read a part of your world, literally one of my least favorite books ever, and I was so scared to get into another one of her books, but I am so happy to report that I loved this book and I rated it, I think I rated it 4.25 stars. Brianna in this story is from part of your world, it's Alexis's best friend. So she's in this and then Jacob is the male main character in this and they are both doctors they both work at the hospital and he is new to the town there's also a fake dating trope in this yeah I just really really enjoyed this book honestly the representation of anxiety was so good and I feel like it made me realize like how much I actually do have anxiety myself and I didn't realize it or like didn't want to accept it i feel like this book just had so many good quotes in it but yes i was very very pleasantly surprised with how much i did like it and i think a part of your world was probably just like a one-time thing for that author that i didn't like i don't know there's just some weird scenes in there that really put me off but overall i'm very very happy that i read that book finally and i actually did pick up her new book just for the summer that i'm really really excited to get into because i also heard that that one was really good yes i'm very very happy that I picked this up. Alrighty guys, those are all of the books that I read throughout the month of May and June. I'm hoping to have a much better reading month throughout the month of July. I've already almost read two books and it's the 8th, so we're on track. <laughs> but yes, I really need to continue the Akatar series. Court of Frost and Starlight is super short, so I feel like I could probably do that this month. I just am very intimidated to start Court of Silver Flames, but I want to do it for Delaney. <laughs> also, I'm trying to still read my June TBR. I posted my TBR jar video and I still have I still have four books from that that I need to get to. So I'm hoping to at least get to like two of these. I really, like I said, want to read The Ballad of Never After. This is one that I'm most likely going to read this month. And then honestly, I would really love to start A Little Life, at least like get through half of this. It's a super long book. It's like 800 pages. So we'll see how much I can get through. But yes, I had this on my TBR for June and I would really like to start it. I think that is everything for today's video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you guys have any book recommendations, video ideas, anything, be sure to leave them down in the comments and I would love to hear from you guys. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!